I have just arrived in Culiacán, Sinaloa, and I'm here because uh, I've been watching these blue peels popping up all over the US, and I want to understand what are those, um, how they made, who are making them, how much they cost, and why are they popping up so hard in the US. So after making contact with one of my sources down here, he agreed to take me to one of these labs. And um, I'm, I'm gonna go tonight and, and check that out and see how these uh, peels are being made and maybe um, have the opportunity to talk to one of the cooks. <laughs> So I'm packing up for Culiacán and I want to show you some of the stuff I like to take when I travel to somewhat dangerous places. Um, this is my backpack, of course. I pack my old broken laptop, my earbuds, whenever I can because um, sometimes you cannot take these on a plane. Um, it's um, the Matachi, which is basically a razor. Um, shout out to Flat Black Industries. These can come very, very handy when out there. Another thing is my handcuff restraint wristband. Uh, it's basically handcuffs. Um, they're very helpful. And my GPFO bracelet. This bracelet, basically what it does, you can take it off um, and you can break a window with it. And whenever you might be trapped in a car, um, these can be very, very helpful, very unsuspicious. So that's basically what I take. I try to travel very, very light. Um, sometimes I will take a watch just um, for the sake of um, exchanging it for maybe my life um, or my cell phone. Sinaloa cartel is changing the way they do things. Under El Chapo Guzman, the illegal laboratories where heroin, methamphetamine, or fentanyl pills were being cooked were huge warehouses in the outskirts of Culiacán. But the arrest of Chapo Guzman and the warrants against those chapitos are giving a new shape to the cartel's operation. As I arrived into the city, my contact in Culiacán seemed more stressed than the last time I was there. He was extra paranoid and asked me not to take anything else but my cell phone. And in some occasions, he even asked me to leave my phone at the hotel. Recently, an order by Mayo Zambada requested everyone operating by the Sinaloa cartel for either Los Chapitos or his faction to lay low. Narco labs must be now inside the city cooking small amounts. You no know, shootouts around the city, meaning now hits against someone must be first kidnapped and killed outside Culiacán, and the last warning that impacted me directly. No cameras around any cartel activity. The first night we went off to a fentanyl M30 pills laboratory. Calling in a laboratory might be too much. This is one of the new ways. They changed big labs for small residential houses or apartments in order to take less losses in case of being raided and to be more discreet as for El Mayo's order. When I was out of my hotel room, my contact reached out to me asking me to meet him somewhere around. He shared the location via WhatsApp. When I was getting closer, he called back, asked me to keep going straight and that he will follow me a few meters behind to check if someone was following. Turn out a white small car was behind my tracks. My contact believed it was a Mexican intelligence unit, but honestly, who the fuck knows, in Culiacán, it could have been anyone. After driving around and making some deflected turns, we first arrived to a middle-class neighborhood not too far from where we started. On my arrival, I met a man who was introduced as one of the most prepared cooks inside the Sinaloa cartel. The house was almost in complete darkness, and he had several packages of M30s on a wooden table. I've been doing these for about two years uh, because I used to do heroin before. How do you guys learn to change from heroin to fentanyl? We changed from heroin to fentanyl because of the profitability. With a small quantity of fentanyl, we can do a lot. Out of profitability, the Sinaloa cartel replaced one key ingredient of the pills, heroin for fentanyl. 
Each pill, according to the cook, has a production cost of 50 US cents, and it's sold for about four to five dollars each. At this place, the cook explained he was only packaging the pills to later be taken into a shop to be stashed in di different vehicles that will try and make their way into the US. He showed me the different types of packaging and the tools they used. I'm taking this one and this one and all of these others. Uh, first, I check them for purity. I weigh them and make sure they come from a good batch uh, before taking them to a different location. He also showed me how to test the pills for quality. What are you burning the pills for? To make sure it slides. Do you see the peel slide? If the peel will stuck, that means that's not a good peel. But that was not the proper laboratory. Later that night, my source along with the cook took me to a different location where he was making a new 50,000 pills batch. The new place was more of an apartment. There was another man who was introduced as the helper and new trainee. The man seemed terrified of a small plastic bag that later I learned was containing 100 grams of pure fentanyl. For Mexican cartels, there are only two ways to get fentanyl, either directly from China and then by the Mexican port of Manzanillo or by ant robbing pharmacies. The cooks started cooking. They, of course, didn't share all the ingredients or specific quantities, but I did learn that to make 50,000 pills like this one, it takes 100 grams of pure fentanyl. When the time came to pour the fentanyl powder into the mix of acetone, blue colorant, and some other stuff, the cook asked me to get as far back as I could to avoid an overdose. Turns out the helper was just recently out from the hospital after accidentally having nailed some of the powder while cooking. He immediately passed out and was in coma at a hospital for eight days. No wonder he was shitly scared. An experimented cook like him makes around $4,000 a month. He told me they get tested every two days by his boss to make sure they stay clean of any drug, including weed. He also told me he was trained by a Chinese man who came to Culiacán for three months to teach him quantities and quality. For the first two months, the Chinese cooked several batches a week, and during the last month, he asked the Mexican cook to do it all by himself. The final test will be shipping a batch to the U.S., and waiting for feedback from the customer.